guys, this is Tony. We have the second video in our Legends Among Us um, video series. And today we're going to have Mr. Donald Dobbs tell some stories about uh, some acquaintances of his. And one of these two guys, his name is Mr. Jerry Simmons. And Jerry Simmons come up with several great inventions uh, that modernized or it helped to modernize longbow archery or traditional archery. So some of those were the uh, frenzy climbing belt, the second chance arrow system, the rotating bow quiver, uh, shark broadheads, we've all heard of shark broadheads, and the peckerwood drill. So these are just a few things that Mr. Jerry Simmons come up with. And I wanna share that with you guys. Um, and another guy that he hung out with, his name was Mr. Byron Ferguson. So Mr. Dobbs has met and hung out with a whole lot of um, people out of the traditional archery group. And hey, I told Kat that if we don't document some of these stories, these stories are gonna go away and nobody is ever gonna have an opportunity to hear this kind of story again. So unfortunately, um, Mr. Jerry Simmons passed away in 2013. He was from Jasper, Alabama, and like I say, he was an acquaintance of, of Mr. Donald Dobbs. And Cat sat down with Mr. Dobbs and got Mr. Dobbs to tell some stories and to show Mr. Dobbs actually has a lot of these inventions that Mr. Simmons invented um, back in the 70s and 80s, and these are some things that we want to share with y'all. So, we hope y'all enjoy the video. Alright, we here today with Mr. Donald Dobbs and Randy Dobbs, and we are going to be talking about a Jerry Simmons system. Is that correct, Mr. Dobbs? That's, that's right. Okay. Uh, if y'all remember Mr. Dobbs, we interviewed him about shooting a longbow, and he's got some little tips and tricks that he is going to demonstrate for us today. Yeah, I want to do this just kind of uh, be an honor for Jerry Simmons. He was an old friend, and he did a lot of different things uh, for bow hunting and archery. And uh, I, I'm going to just, this is what he called the Simmons system. I've got some of his broadheads, and we'll show it sometimes, maybe after a while, but I, I wanted to show his system how he he would take his little backpack, he'd take his little tree stand. At that time, all the old tree stands were made out of conduit, real small and lightweight, because we didn't have tree stands. Uh, Alabama, I don't know exactly what year they passed it where we could use tree stands, but it was a long time. I believe it was 1971, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. about that time, because we, we had a meeting there in Gadsden and talked about it, and we even talked about that poison pod. And Mr. Hill said, we ain't going to use no poison pod. He said, if you can't hit a deer and kill it with a broadhead, you don't need to be hunting anyway. We'll go to the tree, and I'll show you how, how Jerry went up the tree and how the, the safety part of it was. Jerry always had his safety rope, and before he used his safety rope, he would use, he called it a peckerwood drill. He made all this, but before, before he made all of this to look factory, we used a bit and weld it to a piece of metal and used a piece of conduit and put a, put a, a spool of thread spool on there for a handle but this is what he would do he would go in here he would drill him a hole in the tree and it'd take a little while but it didn't it didn't make any difference he would set it up and he could use this same tree for uh, all year if he wanted to at different times of the year get back that thing up all this this pecan tree is hard as I am. But it's going. It was a lot of work back then. Well, you know, like I said, he once But he it got, was probably easier than climbing it. Once he got set up, he didn't have to take a whole lot of equipment in with him. He would uh, he would just take 
and I'm not going to show the whole deal because it, it would take him, you know, like 30 minutes to get set up. And then he would put this up. It, he had all this little stuff in his little little pack. Mine's about wore out because I've had it for, oh, I don't know. I got the first now one. Now, that's here. Jerry Simmons' pouch, yeah, right? I, I got the first one he ever made. And then he had bolts like this. I like these bolts here because you could use an Allen wrench if you left it in there and you put your stand up the tree and there's people hunted in that area. You could come down and take your pegs out. You could leave your stand up and they wouldn't nobody bother it. So you would put your, see I run lost my hole, here it is. You put your peg in there and you would just, see I done got so old I can't raise my legs up that high. And you just pull yourself up and then you'd go ahead and, and as you start it up, you'd put your safety rope on. And that safety rope hooks to the actual pouch itself, correct? Yeah. And see, that keeps you from falling. As you're just putting up, your, he'd go all the way up the tree, he'd put his steps, and then when he got up the tree and put his stand, he'd put his stand up. Then he would uh, he would turn this turn this around backwards, turn it around backwards, and, and it would be it would be his safety when he got on the stand. The stand be sitting like this, and this would be uh, of course this is all adjustable. This would hook on to his loop back here. And it would hold him against this thing saved my life at least one time because I, I was looking down from a tree stand that someone else had put up. It was way down there and it was rocks down there. But when I got up into the tree, it was almost level out there on the, on the ground. Uh, and I was down in the holly, but when I got up, the ground was level out there and I was looking for Man, how deep this thing is, how far is it down? And I fell out. And I was just hanging by this tree, this rope here that he put in there. And also he had a extra, a extra one. He always had an extra one that he would put and use it. Actually, he would use this one and, and hook it for, for this one. Other than that, and this was mostly just for his climate, but he had this extra one that he could put out and, and it would hold you uh, to keep from falling out of the tree. And that's one that I used. And, and this one mostly here was just used for climbing. Also, Randy, get me some of that other stuff. That, that, and, and that box with the uh, chains and things in it. But so, I, Mr. Dobbs, you can honestly say Jerry Simmons has saved your life. Well, it did. Uh, Jerry saved my life with that safety system. Now, I've got something here that Jay Bulger made for me. Okay. If I'm going to hunt on the ground, and this is used also if you didn't have a seat on your tree stand like this one. I'm going to show you that one. But if you didn't have a, a seat and you were hunting on the ground, or if you did have a tree stand, you could put this, you could put your tree stand and then use this for your seat. But I'm gonna show you how this works. And Mr. J. Bulger made that Jay for Jay Bulger you? made this for me. And you could, you know, you can rig it up any way you want to where it's comfortable. But I would take that thing and just set it any way you wanted to. And you can sit real comfortable shoot any way you want to. Now, would you brush yourself the, in? If you could get the wind right, <laughs> the deer would come up right. But there's just so many things that that different people has made to make bow hunting easier for us now. Uh, I've done got so old now, I can't I can't do like, and, and I'm probably going to hunt off the ground more this time. Now, if you're hunting off the ground on that, would you brush yourself in a little bit or? Well, it doesn't really matter because you're up against the have, tree. I would have a good background cover. Right. And a little background cover. Then if I wore that ghillie suit, uh, my friend on on YouTube that I've been watching, Robert Carter, he says they just look right through you with your ghillie suit on. I mean, they, they see you, but they don't see you. Right. 
and if you got a little cover to break up everything, well, they just, uh, they just see right through you. Hand me that thing there, Randy. My other friend, Paul Diller, that passed away, he made this thing. He, uh, he made a form and poured this aluminum, and it's called Patsco. Uh, Paul Dillard Company. And then he's got one that, that was complete, uh, made out of aluminum, but this one was smaller, and you put a piece of plywood on it. And he put a, his seat and everything on it. And what you would do, you would put a strap on it, and you could carry, it, carry the whole thing on your back, on your backpack. And, and set this thing up either upside down or which way you want to do it and get it out of your way. And then you, when you got to your tree, hand me that little chain there, Randy. And then when you got your tree stand hooked up in your tree after you use your uh, Pecklewood climber, Jerry Simmons system, you got up your tree. See, this is all you carried on your back and maybe your little backpack for your, your day pack. And you, and you got your tree stand seat all together and then you just screw that screw that out because it's all together and then you so that was some of the first uh portable tree stands that there was well, then yes uh like i said paul dillard couldn't find one like he wanted and so he just made this one you you should see some of the climbing stands that they made back then. They were they were dangerous. <laughs> they were dangerous. <laughs> I can imagine. Randy, you remember some of them? Yeah, mostly out of conduit. Yeah, but everything we made back then was out of conduit. I mean, it was strong enough. You, but it, you and the old stands, the old climber stands. You only had just one the one level that you stood on. You had to bear hug the tree. Yeah, you had to climb so it. Bear you stayed hug it. you stayed sore and skint most of the time. And uh, you, you tried to find a, a tree that you could make it stay in. Cause sometimes a real hardwood tree, it wouldn't take a bite and it would slide with you. So a lot of times you stayed raw. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I believe that when the portable stands first become a thing, um, there were a lot of fatalities that were associated yeah, with climbing so. stands. I would think so, yes. You could use this same. You could use this same stand here to hunt off the ground. Uh, you know, if you had your place fixed like we we're talking about with your ghillie suit or just a good background and good cover, you could set this up and just do away with this or just leave it on there, like it was, because it just goes into pipe fitting. It's, it's nothing but a, a pipe fitting and pipe threads that this thing all goes into, and just a, a chain, and it hooks into some grooves in here. But you, it makes a good good seat but this is lighter if you know you're gonna hunt on the ground uh, this jay bulger seat is, is, and it's, it's good cushion <laughs> i like that good cushion but it do just as good as anything and it's all just made with with pipe fitting stuff and, and a piece of plywood and cushion and a good welder and a good welder <laughs> and i guess jay's a good welder <laughs> because he made this all right, uh, we'll, we'll go back to the camp in a little while. We'll talk about some of the other stuff uh, that we started and didn't ever finish. But I did want to show you the J.R. Simmons system. I was watching the YouTube, and I've seen several uh, people that has the complete J.R. Simmons system. We've got the, the bow quiver, the arrow quiver, and everything. It's a tube. Well, I'll show you a picture of it. You can just add on to it. Yeah, I think they it. called it a rotating yeah. quiver. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll show you that when we get back to camp. And uh, We was talking a little while ago down in the woods about the Jerry Simmons system. And I've had his system for I don't know how many years. A lot of my stuff is just wore out. And this all this is wore out. When we were out in the woods a little while ago, we were talking about how Jerry Simmons used his safety equipment, climbing a tree and using his, as I'll show in just a minute, his woodpecker drill. But if anyone is out there that knows about this kind of equipment that, that you can 
slide that thing. You can take the end of it and kind of burn it and slide it through. And it's just like a, you've heard of the, the Chinese handcuff. That thing will hold and it won't slip. It holds. Well, this is what he used when he was climbing to hold him against the tree to keep him from, from, <laughs> from falling against the tree. And he would, he would hook this on to, to his uh, tree stand. I mean, his trees is he's climbing the tree steps. He would hook this on, and this would be around the tree, and he'd, he'd be putting his steps on. But, but then after that, after he got up the tree, he had another system. He had another system, and he would turn his belt all the way around. And he had a he had his other little system here in this pouch. And this is what would go around the tree and hold him hold around the tree and go in the tree and hold him to keep him from falling out of the tree. This is around the tree. And this is adjustable where it would slip like we were talking about and slip and adjust any way you want it. This piece of equipment, this same piece of equipment saved my life one time. I mentioned it a while ago, but I was doing a stupid thing. I got in somebody else's stand and was looking down and I fell. And this, I helped my bow though. I didn't drop my bow. But this is this little piece right here held me. And after I swung around there a few minutes, I pulled myself up and got back in that stand and come down. But let me show a little bit up close. This is what he called the woodpecker drill. And I mentioned it a little bit while we were in the woods. We took a piece of conduit and it did basically the same thing, but this is, this is uptown here. This is commercially made and he made it to sell. There's all kind of little inventions on here that you, you wouldn't even think about. But this, he would take that and he would drill his hole. It didn't make any difference how long it took because he would take this when he would go scouting. And if he found a hot tree that was dropping acorns that he wanted to hunt, then he would set up on that. And he'd put all of his stuff back in his pouch. And this is what he used. He used just, I like case hardened bolts. And I like machine bolts actually better because they got a, you can use a uh, Allen wrench to, if it stayed in the tree for several days, it'd get tight and you could take them out. And that would, that would work real good. But here's another little system. I don't have any arrows in here with me, but this is what he called a second change. He would screw this in the tree and he would just stick an arrow in it where either stick the broad head or he could stick the feather in either way, whichever, uh, these are, whichever would hang better. And he would just stick that into the tree, just a screw. <laughs> and he had it made specially and it would hold his arrow. If he missed that first arrow and I haven't got a second shot and I have killed a deer on the second hour, arrow. But it would be there, and he could just ease and get that second arrow. Do they still make those? I, if, if you, I don't know who sells the, the Simmons system now. Someone is selling it. I've got, I've got several of his broadheads, and I'm seeing them on YouTube, uh, and I don't know the names of them. I hear them talking about tiger, tiger shark, and I hear them talking about tree shark and all that, but I don't know the names of them. I don't know the names of them, but this is... But these were the original ones that yes, he made. Yes, this is one of the first ones that he made, and he made this one that he could put a, a extra blade in it like the Fred Bear heads used to use. Uh, and, and just, and here's one that I ground down a little bit, made it a little bit narrower, but... Uh, but these, I see these on, I see these on YouTube all the time, but I, I, I believe they tell me that someone in Oklahoma or somewhere out that way has got the Simmons system, and I don't know how you, 
the approach, how, what, how you get it. But he he had a, a, a unique way of making everything. But the, he didn't make it just. He made it for himself, but so many people wanted it, he had to start making it for other people, and that's how it come about. But his main thing was get into the woods as light as possible and scout and find your place and get set up. And he would sometimes set up on that place and hunt it that evening. And then it was, he didn't want to hunt it every day, but he would maybe, if it was a good morning hunt, he had to hunt it maybe the next morning or uh, a few days later, he might hunt it just in the evening, but he he hunted scientifically. Now, did you go on hunts with Jerry? Let me let me say this. I I don't know if it was in on the old creek archery range that uh, Mr. Hill and I organized and, and started, uh, or the, the, it would probably be the second one we uh, rebuilt the archery range because we had to move the first one, but. Byron Ferguson, Jerry Simmons, and myself shot around with our longbows. And uh, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't outshoot them. I don't think. <laughs> but they, you know, they they both real good archers, and and, they, and you know Byron Ferguson is dead on. But we enjoyed ourselves, and and but I can't remember which range we shot on. But we we didn't shoot, you know, we didn't go a, a full. 30 target round, we just shot a few targets and just uh, just to be able to shoot together. So that's that's the last time that I was able, wasn't well, the last time I saw him, but that's the last time I was able to shoot with him. But I hunted with him in the Chocolaca management area in, up near Heflin, Alabama. And so we'll talk about some other, other things later, but this was just something I wanted to talk to you about. Jerry Simmons, he was a dear friend and he's passed on and uh, his system is still here and someone that knows how to get in touch with the, the, Jerry, the Jerry Simmons system could uh, get on YouTube and let people know where it's located that'd be uh, be a good thing it's a, it's a it's a good system thank you also, if anybody um, knows where to get uh, some of the rope that they used oh, for yeah. that system, please let us know. We have tried, we have sampled so many different ropes lately to try to find this exact match. The um, weave in the rope is very loose fitting weave so that you can, um, you know, put it into itself. And we just haven't been able to find that particular rope. Um, See, it, it will go in and out. You can, you can pull it all the way to the end and not let it come all the way out. Then you can tighten it back up that way. It makes it shorter. So, but, but the other that we get, we can't get it inside. We yeah, can't make the, it go the inside is too the other. Tight on it. Right. But this one, will, this one, will swell up. And, and you can get it started and it'll go in there. And it does a great job. And, and when it tightens up, it, it, won't, it won't slip, it won't slip. You can't make it slip, it saved my life, it won't slip. So there you have it guys, um, straight from one of the last of the straight shooters, Mr. Donald Dobbs, and we appreciate him telling us about the equipment today and showing us um, the equipment. We know that, you know, he's had it for years and years and, um, you know, it's just an honor for us, for him to get it out I and, need some and new out of hiding. <laughs> I need some new bags. To uh, show it to us. So um, there you have it. And we thank you so much, Mr. Dobbs, for coming out and uh, showing it. And we are looking forward to more from Mr. Donald Dobbs and his son Randy in a series that we're starting on the channel called um, uh, Campfire Conversations. So um, be looking for that in the future. We're going to get some old-timey stories, some from way back when uh, Randy was just a kid with uh, his dad and um, some of the things and adventures they went on um, back in those times. So thank you, Mr. Dobbs. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank our, you. our pleasure.